everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are here with our amazing MAPS coaches, Andrea Morrison and Craig Rieger. We will have these webinars every week, so be sure to stay tuned to see what's coming up next. The webinar will be recorded and we'll send the recording out after the webinar is over. If you have any questions, please email us at fasttrack at kw.com. That's F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C-K at kw.com. That's all from me. Guys, take it away. Awesome. Nicole, thank you so much, and thank you to everybody at MAPS Coaching. You guys are fantastic. All right, everybody, thank you for being part of a – we're doing two webinars back-to-back. -back. The first one is 90 Fires in 90 Days, and we'll be followed up by 1030 Pacific Time with 90 Listings in 90 Days. Uh, Nicole, can you jump to the next slide? Awesome. So a couple things we want to share with you, just so you can get into production or increase your production starting tomorrow, a couple of the techniques that we use on a very consistent basis to generate an abundance of buyers. Uh, we'll be door knocking with offers, and we'll discuss that in detail, as well as uh, getting buyers in for a consult, like, like converting buyers on a, on a, on a over the phone or at an open house or, or wherever we might run into them and getting them actually to come to your office for a console and the importance of that and the scripts and techniques that we use to accomplish that. So why don't we start with door knocking with offers. Andrew, you kind of want to set that up and then I'll, I'll take it from there. Yeah, definitely. So door knocking with offers is a really great way to help your buyers and also collect more business. So what we're going to start with is any buyer that you might be working with, and I know we're in a lot of hot markets all over the country, where buyers are making offers on properties and they're in competitive multiple offer situations and they don't always get the home, unfortunately. And this is a great opportunity to take that offer, and Craig will explain in a minute what we do with it, but take that offer and walk around the neighborhood and door knock with it. Um, it's a great way to be able to go back to your buyers, show them what you're doing for them, uh, and be able to get more business off the validity of you're actually working in that neighborhood um, working with buyers and sellers in that neighborhood. Absolutely. We know that across the country, the vast majority of the markets that you're working in, and certainly the markets that we work in through the Pacific Northwest down through California, uh, there, there's a shortage of inventory right now. There's a shortage of listings which means that it's not uncommon that you have buyers that are entering into multiple offer situations and or you have buyers that are just not successful finding the home of their dreams because of the incredibly low inventory on the market right now. So one of the strategies that we actually uh, developed and started using about five years ago because of one of our awesome MAPS Mastery coaches gave us the strategy is to, to take the offers that we have that lose. So Andrea, does every single offer that you write on behalf of your buyers get accepted? Unfortunately not. Yeah, sometimes you get beat up by cash. So often there's five, six, 11, two other offers that come in on the property. And for whatever reason, even though you're representing a very strong offer and, and very well uh, financed buyers, is that occasionally you just don't win in those situations. And so one of the strategies that, that we've developed is we, we want to use that offer for our benefit and we're able to get massive win-win opportunities out of this. So what we'll do is we will take what, what in most states, and I've seen a lot of offers around the country, in most states it's typically the first or second page or maybe a combination of the two of your earnest money or sales agreement. And we'll take a copy of that offer, and we're going to black out anything private. So, for example, if I, I use our offers here in Portland, Oregon, as an example, I'm going to black out my buyer's last name. So instead of Jim and Sally Smith, it's just going to say Jim and Sally. I'm going to simply black out the offer. So this is an offer they made on a property in a neighborhood and lost. And I'm going to block out the last name of, let's say, Smith. And then I'm going to black out the seller's last name. Uh, and then I'm also going to black out the listing agent's name. So what's remaining on the sheet is it will say Craig Rieger. It will say Keller Williams. Uh, this offer was likely dated in the last couple days. And it's going to have the address, and it's going to have the offer price. And I might block out the down payment or anything else I feel is private. So I will then take that offer, and I'll make 50 to 100 copies of that offer. And I'll actually go out and, and canvas the entire neighborhood. And, and I'll knock on every single door. And, and Andrew, you want to role play that script with me and, and I'll, I'll pretend I'm knocking on your door? Yep, definitely. Awesome. So, knock, knock. Hello. 
Oh, hi there. I'm Craig Rieger. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Did you notice that house down the street that's been for sale for, for the last couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, I saw it. I, I drove by it. Fantastic. Well, I know that it doesn't have a sold sign or a pending sign up on it, but I happen to know that that property is under contract because my buyers offered on it over the 4th of July holiday, and unfortunately, they lost. There ended up being three to four offers on the property. My buyers were extremely well approved. I'm not exactly sure why their offer is not accepted. I think maybe that an offer came in in full cash, and regardless, they they are extremely sad that they lost out on this home, and their family really wants to live on this street. Here's a copy of the offer that they made just a couple days ago on your neighbor's home. Have you thought about selling your property? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I haven't, but there are some neighbors down the street that are having a baby, and they've been talking about moving to a bigger place. Okay, going out of script, Andrea, that's what's so cool here, is understand, folks, when you've got a copy of an offer, and again, you've blocked out or blacked out confidential information, and when you have a copy of an offer that you're able to show to, to a homeowner on a street for a house that might be on the same street or a block or two away, you are so valid. You are giving them something that the internet can't give them. You're, you're providing a value that Zillow can't provide. You are showing them a black and white signed offer from just a few days ago for one of their neighbor's houses. And as Andrew just indicated, when you become that valid, I can promise you, because we do this on our team on a weekly basis, if they've got any desire whatso whatsoever to sell their property, any desire, they're going to have a conversation with you. They're going to set an appointment. They might actually even invite you to come inside their home. If they don't have a desire to personally sell, just as Andrew just described in the role play, there's a really high probability because you're so valid holding a copy of that offer that they would actually say, hey, the folks down the street I heard are pregnant and looking for a bigger home. Have you gone to the Johnson's house around the corner? We had dinner with them last week and they're talking about taking a job transfer to Arizona. When you're holding a copy of that offer up or actually even handing it to them, they're going to tell you anybody in the neighborhood that you need to target because you're providing a value to them by showing them this, and they want to help their friends and neighbors out. And again, as I shared, if they actually want to sell the house themselves, they're, they're, you're going to get their attention. I love door knocking. I love door knocking for, hey, we've got an open house this Saturday. Would you like to join us? Have you thought about selling your property? And I've had tremendous success with that type of approach throughout my 21-year uh, career. And what I will share is that by actually providing a written signed offer, preferably in the last week or two is when it's dated, you get a whole other level of validity as you're knocking on these doors. And, and I'll find that when I door knock with offers versus just door knocking like, do you want to come to my open house? I will schedule <clears throat> two to three times more appointments in those situations than when I'm actually just door knocking saying, do you want to come to my open house? Andrew, is there anything I missed on that or you want to add or share? Well, I really like the idea of them being able to go back to your buyers and tell them what you just did for them. So buyers often when they miss out on a house, they're, they're sad, they're disappointed, they're not very happy. Um, and to be able to call them up and say, hey, I just spent my afternoon, two days after they missed out on the house, I just spent my afternoon door knocking that neighborhood for you, and I came across two or three other people who might be interested, and you'll definitely be the first one in the door to look at it. I, I think that just you're securing that you're their, you're their realtor, that you're the one that's really helping them achieve their goals and find them a house. So not only is that going to make them feel good, it's going to up your referrals as well. So it's just a win-win on all sides. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's role play that really quick. So, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Andrea, it's Craig Rieger, Keller Williams. How you doing? Hey, we're just super disappointed. We loved that house. Yeah, I know you and Gus are, are pretty bummed out, and I am as well. And I just wanted to share with you what my team and I did this morning because we know how how much you wanted that home, how important it is to you to get into that neighborhood and that school district. Andrew, here's what we did. We actually took a copy of your offer. We blacked out all confidential information, yet I needed a copy of the offer that you made on that property over the 4th of July to have validity, and my team and I took 100 copies of your offer, and we went through the entire neighborhood, and we knocked on literally every single door, and we talked about your family and why you want to move into this neighborhood and what's important to you about this school district, and I've got great news. There's four folks out of the out of 100 doors we knocked on that said, hey, they probably want to sell in the next few months. Uh, they're going to talk it over. A couple of them, we've set some follow-up appointments to come back and go over evaluations. 
And my goal, if we can get these folks to sign a contract and agree to sell their properties, I want to get you into it before anybody else sees the property. So I just want to let you know, I know that you're, you're disappointed about losing on that home, and our team went the extra mile to help secure you a property on that street that's not currently on the market. Wow. That's impactful. That's very, very cool. Yeah, it's a really – so out of script, it's, it's just a great follow-up opportunity. I know we've got a couple questions that came up on this, and thank you for, for those that have typed them out. And we are going to hit Q&A in about 10 minutes. Does that sound good? All right. Um, Andrew, do you want to talk about getting buyers in for a console and what the importance is on that? Yeah, I mean, I think this is just something that gets missed a lot and just the hype of someone's looking for a home and you're anxious to, whether it's a sign call, run out and show it to them, or it's a friend and you think, oh, it's fine, like we'll just grab a drink and then go see a house or coffee or whatever. Um, it's just not something that I feel like happens 100% of the time. And I think it's the number one thing that can change your conversion ratio from, you know, running out and showing a house, which might be a 5% conversion ratio, to literally converting 95% of your business just because you sat down and had a console with them. So it, here on our team, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute. We don't do consults at the house. We don't do consults at coffee shops. We do them in the office every single time. Um, and the reason why well, let's we do talk that about is the mindset work. of that. Yeah, it does work. And, 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 and thank you, Andrea. And the mindset of that is that if I get a sign call and they're like, hey, I want to see Dallas on 123 Main Street tonight at 5 o'clock, like my DNA is like, that's awesome. I want to run over there. I want to show them the property. Yet, and I want to sell that property, of course, as well. Yet the reality of that particular buyer falling in love with that particular home is extremely slim. And if I go over there and as they're walking through the property and trying to determine if this is the right place that they want to live at and raise their family or do whatever they're going to do in, that is what, that is what their focus is. And if, while they're focused on the home and is this the house they want to live in and purchase, if I'm trying to share my value proposition and the benefits of working with the Craig Reader Group and, and the services that we provide, there's typically a massive disconnect because they're there for one part of the agenda and their part is, hey, I just want to see if this house is a good fit for my family. I'm there, of course, to sell the property but equally to secure them as clients, either to write the offer on that home or to secure them as clients so I can represent them and help them find the home of their dreams. And if I'm going into that feel in the living room, the odds of conversion, as, as you shared, Andrea, at best are 5 to 10 percent. Is that out of every 10 times that we do that, the odds of actually securing that buyer and selling them a property based on my experience is about one out of 10, about one out of 10. Yet when we are successful of getting them into the market center, preferably not a coffee shop, actually to have them commute to the market center, to our office, have a sit down formal meeting, very similar to what they would do with their doctor, with their accountant or with their attorney, and we have a formal consultation, the odds of us uh, actually selling them a property, getting a buyer broker agreement signed, and helping them reach their goal of purchasing a home with us representing them go up to the 80 to 90 percentile. So we just feel extremely passionate that our number one goal, whether it be at open houses or sign calls or prospecting or door knocking, is to, is to get buyers to come into the office. So Andrew, you want to kind of talk about how you accomplish that? Because you are truly one of the best I've seen in the industry at making that happen. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line of it is showing them the value. Um, I mean, we can talk about it's our policy, this is what we do for safety reasons, and all that kind of stuff. And I think those are great scripts to have in your back pocket, and they're definitely valid. But the consumer cares about what's going to save them time, money, and help them get to, to their goal, which is purchasing a home. So really just providing them with that that benefit and letting them know, hey, Craig, if you if you can just spend 20 minutes, come into my office, sit down, I would love to spend some time just going over what you're looking for, talk about the market, make sure we're on the same page, then I can go out and I can find you all of the homes that are going to fit your criteria, and we can spend an afternoon going out and looking at those, as opposed to driving out to this one during rush hour and driving out to that one over there and it's not quite the right one. I'd rather spend 20 minutes of our time just to kind of get on the same page and make sure that I'm doing the best job I can for you to help you to find homes both on and off the market. Um, that way we won't miss out on anything um, and we're all on the same page. So 
by spinning it around and just saying this is actually for your benefit, it's going to save you time, it's going to make sure that we're not missing out on anything. With this hot market, that's definitely something that buyers are going to be concerned about. And they're seeing homes pop up on Zillow or Redfin or wherever they're looking and they're seeing them sold the next day, making sure that you're providing to them a value of I'm going to get all of this done and out of the way up front so that all I can do is focus on exactly what you're looking for and finding and showing you those houses. Um, and you're just providing that value to them. They're, they're going to see the benefit if you explain it in that, in that context. Well, you know what, Andrew, I really appreciate that. And I'm getting off work, and I've got the kids i got to pick up at, at soccer at 7 o'clock, and I really just want to go and see that house at 5. Can you meet me there, and we can talk about it inside the property? Yeah, totally understand, and I get it. You're busy, I'm busy. You know what, it sounds like you have some time after 5. Why don't we do this? Let's start at my office. Um, I promise it won't take much time, and I'm going to pull some other properties that might be good as well, and we can talk about those while we're together, and then we can go hit this house right afterwards, and there might be another couple in that neighborhood you may choose to see as well, um, and that way we can, get, we can get the most for your time and our time together. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I can make that work. Awesome. Awesome cool. job, Andrew. Good. Well, and, and we're going to be talking about how to sign up for the 90 Buyers in, in 90 Days class in, in a few minutes on the webinar, and, and the reality is is that Andrea and I have dozens of objection handlers for these exact situations. Uh, they're typed out. We'll be providing them throughout the course. We'll be role-playing them. And it is, it is a massive difference. We are, as an industry, or for me personally, I left hundreds and hundreds of sales over the course of, of several years on, on the table because I would simply run out and show the property. <clears throat> and, and it was actually another one of our MAPS Mastery Coaches, Monica Reynolds, I uh, was coaching with my wife a few years back. And, and she's the one that helped us develop the 90 buyers in 90 days. And she challenged us and said, guys, how many buyer consults are you doing right now a month? And we had a pretty big business at that point. I believe we were in, in Gary's group and masterminding. And when I looked at it, we had about 10, 12 actual buyer consults in the office in a month. And she said, I'm going to challenge you guys every single day, every single day, you have at least one buyer consult in your office. I want to see you increase it from that 10 or 12 a month up to 30. And that was a game changer for our business because we had to get really intentional in, in our scripting, in our objection handling, in our mindset, and in the activities and behaviors that we brought to the office every single day to, to nearly triple the amount of consults that we we're accomplishing. And what we found through this process is as long as we stayed focused on the goal of one buyer consult today in the office, it wasn't terribly difficult. We actually had an abundance of sign calls coming in. We had an abundance of leads that were meeting at open houses. We were just doing a really poor job of converting those because we're trying to sell on the spot at the open house of our value, or we're trying to sell when we showed a property on a sign call in the living room of, of why we were the right agents or why they should consider using us. And when we move the mindset, we need to get them in the office. We have to become literally Jedi masters at, at scripting and objection handling to get folks to come to the office. Our business went up exponentially. And it really didn't take a whole lot of work. It just took the mindset and the scripting. And that's one of the things that Andrew and I will be providing to you throughout this program. So do you want to talk about, you know, what, what the course also provides, Andrea? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're going to be talking. It, it, it is going to be a lot about mindset and then the scripts and role-playing those scripts so we can get uh, – really get those foundational pieces down because that's where it's all going to start. And then we'll build on there of what sources to use and how to convert those, what those scripts are, what to do. We're going to get into all those details throughout the eight weeks. Um, but it really is going to start with that number one foundational piece of the right mindset, the right scripts, and the right foundation to build off of. And from there, it just all becomes easier. I mean, it really is about the basics and then just building on those. And Absolutely. I think what's so neat is that, you know, we did this. We went from, Craig, like you said, we were only doing, I, I want to say, eight to ten buyer consults a month, um, if that, some months. And we upped it to consistently signing a buyer broker agreement every single day. And that counted Saturdays and Sundays, every single day. And it was off these few couple of tweaks. We were in a place of not really knowing what we were doing. We were doing some of the right activities. We were doing the open houses. We were returning sign calls. Um, we were doing these activities, but we just kind of didn't really know what to do with them. So this course is going to come from those foundational pieces to how to generate that business and then what to do with it when you get there so that you can have um, the success really that we saw or whatever your goals are as well. 
Yeah, it reminds me of uh, my maps mastery coach, Tony DeSello, said, well, Craig, you, you have a big business by accident. And at first I was a little bit offended by that. Like, well, what do you mean by accident, Tony? Like, I'm, I'm working really hard, buddy. Like, I, I put the hours in. I'm grinding it out. And, and this is really what he meant. Is he said, Craig, when you have models and systems that can be replicated by you and potentially anybody else that you choose to go to business with on your team, you're going to find that your business goes completely vertical. And what you end up getting out of it is, well, yes, of course, a massive business, but you also will get balance back into your family life into your spiritual time and into your health. And and that's really what this course is about. It's 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 as Andrea said, it's gonna certainly focus a large content on mindset, because if we don't have the right mindset, then nothing else is gonna fall into place. I was reading something on the internet yesterday and it was a gentleman that, that uh, interviewed Gary Keller and he got to interview Gary in his office at Keller Williams International and the one thing this person took away from Gary Keller was think bigger think bigger. And that's going to be a massive part of this course is your goal may not be to, to work with 90 buyers in 90 days or to list, or, or as I say, list is to sign 90 buyer contracts or in, in 90 days. Uh, it might be to do 200. It might be to do 20. It might be to do 30. Uh, we've got 90 and 90 because that's how we set up the course. That's the challenge our map coaches put us on. And we had the right size team at that time to be able to accomplish that goal. If as we focus on the right activities. Uh, we just want to be really clear for anybody concerned taking this course is that we're going to help you customize it to you. And if you're brand new in the business and signed up for this webinar this morning and yesterday was your first day as a licensed agent, 90 and 90 is possible, yet it might be a little bit out of reach. So you might be looking at 10 buyer contracts or 20 buyer contracts or 15, whatever number is you're comfortable with, yet we are going to push you to think bigger. We're then going to teach you and provide you with copies of the scripts uh, and, and, and role play techniques and, and the proven models and systems to ensure that whatever goal is that you set, whether that's 90 and 90 or 20 and 90, that you've got the foundational pieces in place that will enable you to hit that goal. Uh, I also want to share that this course is not necessarily about having a team. Andrew and I have a large team. We've had a large team for a long period of time. Uh, this is an awesome course for an individual agent. This is a great course for, for a mega team or any level in between. Okay, Andrew, why don't we jump into the Q&A that I saw pop up. I think I've, I'm able to click on it here. Uh, that is not a question. Okay, uh, did you black out the offer price? No, we did not black out the offer price. That is something that I, I intend or choose to leave. So this is regarding the door knocking with offers. Uh, we actually leave that on there because we want to show the validity that, hey, this property down the street was listed at 420,000, and in most cases, our buyers offered 420 or 425,000. Uh, there's nothing confidential on that. If you feel uncomfortable and you want to block out the price in your local market or check with your broker prior to doing so, fantastic. Uh, we have never seen an issue with this from coaching that's around the country, from our expansion teams around the country, or from our own business throughout the Pacific Northwest in California. Uh, again, if, if you feel more comfortable blocking out the price, go for it. We like leaving it. And again, as Andrea and I uh, showed in the role play, we're calling our clients up and sharing either before or after. We did this for you. We went and knocked on 100 doors because you're bummed out because you missed out on this house. And when you work with the Craig Reader Group, we go the extra mile. And to go the extra mile, I needed a copy of your offer for validity. And by the way, not every house on the street is identical. So showing them an offer at 420 is, is really not even relevant to, to the house we're knocking on, which might be a $500,000 home or a 380 home. It's just showing them this is real. We're real. Our buyers are real. Do you want to sell your property? Because we've got buyers right now. And then, of course, this is a great technique to get listings. When we get listings, what do we get from listings? Well, we get more buyers. So actually part of the 90 buyers in 90 days class is about securing some more listings for your business because when you get listings, uh, buyers flock to them like bees to honey. And then Nathan asks, is how can you not be in violation of your fiduciary responsibility to your client by disclosing any reason why their offer was not accepted? Uh, you said possibly beat out by cash offer. Um, I'm not aware of any fiduciary duties. I can certainly check with our brokers here in Oregon of disclosing any reason why their offer is not accepted. They lost. They wrote an offer and they lost. And, and often we're not even told by the listing agents why they lost. Again, I don't want to overthink it. We're just using that offer as bait and as validity to knock on doors. If you've got any concerns with fiduciary laws in your local state or jurisdictions or MLSs, uh, review this technique with your broker prior to going out. Yet I'll assure you that, that this can be done. You may have to tweak it a little bit for your local market. 
and it's an extremely effective way to get more buyers or get more sellers. All right, Andrew, do you want to talk about how people can sign up and when this program launches? Yep, so um, you can sign up at uh, Maps Group Coaching, and this is going to be starting on Monday at uh, 12.30 Central Time, which is 10.30 Pacific Time. It's going to be an hour long every week for eight weeks. Um, we do record all of the calls, so if you have to miss it for any reason, you'll be able to just log on and listen to it at your convenience. Um, it's $298 for the entire eight-week course. Outstanding. Outstanding. I've got a couple more questions that looks like it's popped up here. I've got one from Sean. I have a client that is interested in a condominium community that doesn't allow door knocking. Should I mail this same kind of offer over to the various homeowners? Sean, the, the, the simple answer is sure, absolutely yes. And the more complicated answer of how we would do it is it'd be a no. If anytime I mail something out to people I don't know, I personally call that passive marketing. And I believe in aggressive marketing because in aggressive marketing, I've got a higher probability of securing a client and converting leads. So part of our program, we're going to show you how to find phone numbers for people, like, for example, every single owner in this condominium complex or 80, 90 percent of them. And if I couldn't knock on the door because it's a secure condominium, I would actually call every single owner in that building and share with them, hey, it's Craig Reader with Kelly Williams Realty. Unit 201 sold last week. My clients made an offer on it. Uh, there was three offers. They offered 420000 They're devastated. They want to live in your building. Have you thought about selling? So I would go with the calling and potentially the mailing as well. And then I've got a question here from Ron. So the person says there is someone who has talked about selling. I can have him call you, and the person isn't willing to give you his name or address. How do you deal with this objection? So I think this is regarding uh, door knocking with offers. There is someone who has talked about selling. I can have him call you and that person isn't willing to give you his name or number, hmm, that's a good one. And that does come up when we're door knocking. So it might be, yeah, I don't want to sell, but John down the street has mentioned he wants to sell. And, of course, I'm going to say, well, it's fantastic. Which house is John's? Or can I get his contact info? And the homeowner might say, you know, I'll, I'll just have John call you. I think, I think that's what Ron's asking me. In that situation, I would definitely give my card. And I might just say, you know, no, which house is it? I, you know, it, it, it's it's it's. I'll, I'll start with if somebody says, hey, uh, John around the corner, I'll be like, oh, that's cool. Which house is his? And if I can get them to point or say that corner house or the yellow house, then I've got somebody to go and target if, whether they give me the number or not. Also in our program, we'll be showing you, as I just mentioned, how to get phone numbers for folks. And I might call and just say, hey, I was, I was in the neighborhood. You weren't home. One of your neighbors said you might be considering selling. So I'll get pretty tenacious. If they literally just lock down on me and won't give me anything on the person, where they live, their contact info, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'll just give my card and thank them and just say, hey, these buyers are for real. I've shown you a copy of the offer. You know, please have your neighbor call me. This is legit. My buyers want to live on your street. So I, I don't know how much deeper I could go with that. Uh, how big of a team uh, did you have or do I have uh, our team right now is about 12 people. It's been as large as 20. Uh, and again, this course isn't necessarily about having a team. It's just about having a massive buyer business. Um, and then Nathan wrote the word breakdown. I'm not sure what that means, Nathan, but I'm still online. And if, if you are, just type down what that means, and I'll be happy to try and answer it. All right, Andrea, how do we do? <laughs> I think we did pretty good. I think we did pretty good. I'm super excited for this course to be starting up on Monday. Um, it's 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 just as much fun for us as it is for you guys. We love getting into this stuff. Um, we love helping you grow your business to whatever extent it is that you want to grow it. Outstanding. Yeah, we promise to provide massive value. It's a, a two-month course for $149 a month, and Andrew and I are going to bring it. We're going to help you have a big mindset, a big business, and our goal for you, if we get to set goals for you, is at the end of it, we're going to help you have balance and consistency in your business in any market that comes at us. All right, why don't we move to the next, uh, the next slide. All right, fantastic. So uh, 90 listings in 90 days. Andrea, do you want to kind of set that up? Yep, absolutely. So 90 listings in 90 days was our, was our personal challenge of listing 90 homes in 90 days. And this is, again, another challenge that we actually went through as a team. It really stretched and it grew us. And... Again, a lot of it is going to be going back to mindset and foundational pieces of building your business, 
getting listings and what the scripts look like in order to, to build a massive listing business and really use that leverage to get to the next level in your business. Again, whatever that might be, it, it, it may not be 90 listings in 90 days. Um, it might be, like Craig had said, depending on where you are in the business, it could be 10 to 15, or you could be in a mega team where maybe it's 150 listings in 90 days. Absolutely. I was I was I was talking with Lance Loke and uh one of the top agents in the world just this morning. I remember when I met him five years ago and his business was, was already blowing up and he said, Craig, I, I love your program and my goal is I'm gonna take a hundred listings in a month and I'm like, That that blew my mind and he ended up uh, securing that about four or five months later. And on the flip side, there might be some folks who, who are really looking to take ten or fifteen listings in ninety days. Uh for us we're listing about four or five houses a month. And so on average about one a week. And again, it was our Maps Mastery coach said, guys, I, I'm going to challenge you to think really big, go really big, set up the models and systems, and to list 90 properties in 90 days. And our team successfully accomplished that several times over the last few years. And Maps was gracious enough to give us uh, the ability to coach other agents with inside of Keller Williams. And we've literally brought thousands of people through this and helped their businesses go to a very high level. So why don't we talk about some of the techniques? You want to go to the next slide? Nicole, next slide. Awesome. Well, let's start with, because we talked about door knocking with offers, and we, we recognize a lot of the folks on this call might have just been part of the buyer one, so we'll touch on that. Let's talk about uh, sell a listing, tell the world, or, or we can cross out the word sell a listing and just add the word get a listing and tell the world. When I first started coaching with Tony DeSello, uh, geez, that was about seven, eight years ago now when I first joined KW and was fortunate enough to get Tony as, as my maps coach and have a maps coach. And and we're in a recession, and Tony said, Craig, here's your whole strategy. Get a listing, tell the world. Sell a listing, tell the world. He goes, I just want you to go every single day and focus on getting one listing, and when you get it and or sell it, I want you to tell the world. And and it seems like such a basic concept and strategy, yet, of course, our Maps Mastery coaches are, are awesome at what they do, and it really turned out to be quite, quite brilliant. And it... What that looked like for us is we might go and get a listing, and then we would door knock the entire neighborhood, and we would simply say, hey, we've got a new listing, and, and do you want to come to our open house this weekend, or have you thought about buying or selling? I mean, how often, Andrea, as, as agents, do we, do we get a listing, we sell it, and then we go to pick up our lockbox or our paraphernalia or whatever we've left inside the house you know, on the day of closing or the day before closing, and as we're pulling up to pick up our items, we see a competitor sign across the street. Yep, that happens. Doesn't feel very good. It, ha it happens all the time. It happens absolutely all the time. Make no mistake, when a listing hits the market and a sign goes up, if we take a snapshot of the nearest 100 homeowners, there's four or five of them that say, oh, my gosh, look at the Johnsons. They're getting a bigger house. I heard they're selling, and they're going to move to XYZ neighborhood. Or when a house hits the market, there's four or five other homeowners within the nearest 100 that are watching that saying, oh, my gosh, look at the Smiths. They're downsizing, honey, I don't know why we're dealing with this big yard or all the square footage and the kids are off to college and they're moving to a condo and they're going to have more free time. Like for whatever reason is going through their heads of what's going on in their life and business, when any single listing hits the market, make no mistake, there's at least four or five people that are tracking it and watching it and having conversations about it. And in some cases, there might be some envy. In some cases, they might be saying, hey, that's a great idea. This might be a good time for us to do it. And, and our goal in 90 listings, one of our goals, and we've got a whole bunch of techniques we're going to show you to help you uh, really maximize the exposure. And when that sign goes up across the street or around the corner from a listing, it's going to be your sign, not a competitor's. So we're going to, we're going to handle that with door knocking. Uh, we're going to absolutely hammer on circle prospecting. I'm not going to lie. This is a lead generation-based course. Uh, we're going to give you the scripts, the techniques, the mindset. We're going to help you overcome the fear. Like these are activities that we were not good at and did not do for the first 15, 16 years of my career. And and now we're 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 on a journey to becoming at a mastery level, and we're we're highly skilled and highly successful at it. And part of that's going to be circle prospecting. Uh, we absolutely know that that when a listing hits, there's going to be neighbors who are considering selling, and our goal is to get to them before they find another agent. NAR stats that Gary Keller shared with us at, at the vision speech at Family Reunion said, some, I, I don't have them written down in front of you, but someone wanted 90% of folks that purchased homes said I had a great experience. I would use my, my agent again, 
Like for me, that that's a great ratio. That's saying, well, as an industry, with all the complexities that can come up through home inspection and title and attorneys and you know just 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 what happens in a real estate transaction, for nine out of ten people on a national level to say I had a great experience, I'd use my agent again. We we were doing outstanding as an industry. Yet what Gary also shared is only eleven percent of the folks that that. Uh, purchased or sold a home uh, for their second or, or additional time, use the same agent they previously used. So there's a pretty big disconnect, Andrea, between 90% of the time people said, it, I had a great experience, I'd use my agent again, to only 11% when they actually go to move, use that same agent. And so our goal in, in, in get a listing, tell the world, is we want to help you capitalize off that. There's a high probability that the other 99 people around the listing you just took are what we call abandoned sellers. Uh, an agent worked with them, probably did a phenomenal job, helped them reach their goals, gave them a big hug, gave them a closing gift, and unfortunately didn't have a database or a touch campaign. And years have gone by, and now we get a listing on that street, and, and they're thinking about selling often because we put a sign up, and in many cases we're selling it, selling it both offers in a short period of time. And they're going to run into somebody at church or work or get a referral, or track down the agent that sold the house five years ago they haven't heard from. Or our goal is we know if we can attack this head on and get to them first, we have a high probability. So one of the things we'll do is, well, I'll just role play with Andrea. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, uh, is this Andrea? Yep. Hey, Andrea, this is Craig Rieger. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Hey, you might have noticed we just listed your neighbor's home at 123 Main Street, Beaverton, Oregon. We put the sign up yesterday. And what we find, statistics show, is that when one seller puts their house on the market, three more sellers will think about listing and go on the market in the next 90 days. Are you one of the three folks that intends to sell your property in the next three months? Nope. Awesome. Do you have any friends or neighbors that have talked about selling their property I should reach out to? Can't think of any. Fantastic. Okay, hey, one last question for you, Andrea. Rates are still at, at close to historic lows. Uh, we're actually helping folks right now purchase investment properties or positive cash flowing. Have you thought about selling or have you thought about investing? No, uh uh. Awesome. Ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Andrea, this is Craig Rieger with Keller Williams Roddy. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, we just listed your neighbor's house. See, this isn't about necessarily converting 99 people into selling their property. This is about calling the 99 folks or door knocking or all of the above. And we're going to give you, again, the scripts, what time of day to do it, how to do it, how to overcome objections. And we know that when we get that listing, however we get it, when we do the right activities around it, because we go back to telling the seller, get a listing, sell it, tell the world, get a listing, tell the world. When we do those activities with the right scripts, we will secure two or three more listings around it. And that's pretty cool. And that's that's one of the techniques that we'll be using throughout this. Andrew, what else would you share about get a listing, tell the world? Yeah, I think one of the things that comes to mind is that probably, you know, a lot of folks on this call are wondering about mailers like just listed, just sold. You know, if that's part of your business, that's fantastic. Um, our class is about how to really lead, generate, and prospect and and build your database and 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 that might be off of a, a something you just listed or just sold but to do it for really little or no cost so a lot of what we're going to be sharing with you is going to be something that's virtually free or extremely inexpensive and if it's part of your marketing plan to add to that with with something that is going to cost a little bit of money great they can definitely be plus with that um, but that's not our goal of the class we're going to be showing you how to to build your business with as little uh, money investment as possible Agreed. Yeah, I think mailers are fantastic, especially if they're inside a farm where you've got brand recognition, maybe part of the community, maybe part of some churches and through the school and through all of that, I think mailers are great because you're just reinforcing a brand. For me personally, I'm not a big fan of mailers when I take one random listing in Tigard, Oregon to mail out 100 postcards. And I take a, a random listing 16 miles away in Gresham, Oregon, and I send out another mailer. I'm not saying it's not effective. Yeah, I don't have brand recognition, and the odds of, of, of getting a phone call off of that passive marketing, yes, it happens, yet it's quite low. Yet I do know that if I practice my scripts and if I've got the right scripts, and if I get a listing and I door knock or I call the nearest 99 owners, the odds of me setting up two or three listing appointments are extremely high. So I'm going to go with that if, that method, and and to Andrea's point is is – it's extremely inexpensive. There's some technology that we may be recommending throughout this program 
<clears throat> that may help you uh, find phone numbers to people that are difficult to find phone numbers for you so you can make these types of phone calls. And of course, that technology will come with some type of expense. With the exception of that, everything in 90 listings in 90 days is really about having a big mindset, a time block schedule, the right script to, to go out and for a few hours a day to stay hyper-focused and in securing good listings in good neighborhoods that are marketable that, that you want to be in business with, right? Because if we're going to lead generate, it's not, I don't want to lead generate in an area that's not a price point I want to work in. I don't want to lead generate in an area that takes me too far to drive from my living room because I'd rather get home earlier and spend that time with my family or spiritual or health. So we're going to help you determine in your local market what area you want to dominate how do you break into it, and, and how do you, do you literally take over the listing inventory in that market? And what's cool is we know that when you take over the listing inventory, when you dominate the listing market, what happens? Well, more sellers start reaching out to you, and they say, hey, come and list my property. I see you've got everything else listed in the neighborhood. Uh, door knocking with offers, I know that we've got some of you on the call that were part of our, our buyer presentation at, at the beginning of this at 10 o'clock Pacific time. I'll briefly you know, touch on that. This is a great strategy that we use with our sellers. So, so Andrea, uh, you've sold several listings in the last 48 hours. How many offers did you get on each one? Several. I, I, all of them sold with multiple offers, actually. Okay, so, so let's say the offers, listing you sold. On it. Okay. okay, the listing you sold yesterday had three offers. Is that common or uncommon in your market? Really common. Really common. Does it happen every time? Of course not. Yeah, it does happen right now on a fairly consistent basis. So you get a listing, you got three offers on it, which means that your client accepted one offer. Is that fair? Yep. <clears throat> which means they either rejected two offers or put two offers in backup position. Is that true? That's correct. Okay, awesome. So you've got a listing, your client's accepted one offer, let's just say they rejected the other two offers and, and you sent them back to the agents. So the mm -hmm. first thing we're going to do as a listing agent is we're going to go and change out the sign or put a giant rider up or, or a giant sticker, whatever it is that you want to do in your local market, and literally on day one, we're going to put a sold sign up. We're not going to put a pending sign up. We're not going to put up a you missed it or gone. We're going to literally put up the biggest sold sign that we can put up in front of the house, and it's going to say sold, it's going to say KW, and it's going to say Craig Rieger, and it's going to have either, either my website or, or my office phone number on it. And I know some of you are thinking, like, well, gosh, we can't do that. We haven't made it past inspection. We haven't made it past appraisal. What if it falls apart? Well, this is your choice. That's the beauty. All we're doing is giving you options on how to grow a bigger business by probably not doing too much work than you're currently doing based on having great systems and models. So we're going to put up that sold sign. And, yes, of course, if the house falls apart, we're going to drive back over and take the sticker down of the sold sign. We're going to put the for sale sign back up. Yeah, we're going to do it immediately because what did Tony DeSello teach us? Get a listing, sell it, tell the world. Well, I don't want to wait two or three weeks until inspections and appraisals have cleared before I put up my sold sign. All of the, the excitement has worn off at that point. Andrea, some of the listings you're getting right now selling in the first three or four days? Yeah. So when you get a listing, you put a for sale sign up, and then people go away for the long 4th of July week, and they come back on Sunday or Monday, and they see the for sale sign that went up as they were leaving town now has a sold sign. Does that, for the people that want to sell in that neighborhood, do you think that gets their attention? Definitely. If all, yeah, if they have any inkling of selling, and they, they see a massive sold sign go up in the first week or two after the first sale sign, they're going to contact you. I promise you, this isn't theory. This is something we do every day, and we see top producers around the country doing it as well. Now, on the flip side, if you sell it over this holiday week and you go through inspections and appraisals or two or three weeks go by and you put up a pending sign or maybe a sold sign three weeks from now, do you think that has the same effect or a lesser effect? Lesser effect. I think so, too, based on our experience. Awesome. So you get a listing. You have three offers. Your client accepts one. You reject the other two. You go and put a massive sold sign up. Well, now we take those two other offers. We black out anything confidential. So we black out the other agent's name. Uh, we black out folks' last names. We black out anything on there that we feel in our local market is confidential. And, and we, what's remaining is, is for sure it says Craig Rieger, your name. It says Keller Williams Realty. It has a house address, 123 Main Street, Beaverton, Oregon. And in most of my markets, we feel extremely comfortable leaving the offer price as well. And we take that offer, we go door knocking. And it's very simple. I'll role play it with you. Andrea, knock, knock. Hello. Andrea, it's Craig Rieger with Keller Williams Realty. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? 
Good. Thanks so much. Hey, did you see my, my giant sold sign around the corner on the Johnson's house? Couldn't miss it. Awesome. They are so excited. We put on the market last week. They received three offers. All of the offers came in above, at or above full price. The Johnsons, of course, accepted the offer that worked out best for them. Hey, I've got a copy of two other offers here from that property. There's nothing confidential on here, but as you can see, they were dated four or five days ago, 123 Main Street. These are the two buyers that lost out on that home. They really want to live on this street. Have, have you guys thought about selling? No, we haven't. Do you have any friends or neighbors? Like These are real offers dated four days ago for the Johnson's house around the street. These are buyers that want to live on the street. Has anyone else mentioned they might be downsizing or relocating or, or anybody needs to target the neighborhood to share with them that I've got buyers right now that could buy their home? Yeah, the folks at the end of the cul-de-sac have been talking about uh, moving out of state. Fantastic. So now I'm going to go to that house. I'm going to knock on their door. I'm going to set a listing appointment. And I'm going to get it listed. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I don't steal other agent's buyers. I'm going to call back the other agent who wrote the offer that lost on my listing. Ring, ring. Hello. Andrew, it's Craig Rieger, Keller Williams Realty. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, thanks so much for the offer that you guys made last week on Main Street. Uh, that sale is going really well. Uh, thank you again for that offer, and I'm sorry our clients didn't accept your offer. I've got great news. I just listed a house right around the corner from it. It's different yet fairly similar, and we would love to entertain another offer from your buyers on that property. It's going to hit the market on Saturday, and I just wanted to personally share with you because you've already offered in the neighborhood. This is coming on board. Oh, that's nice. I'll share it with them. Pretty odd. Like, wouldn't that make you feel good as an agent? Yeah, it would. Awesome. So those are just some techniques of, of what we do to, to get a listing, sell it, tell the world, using offers, whether there are offers or other agents who have written on our property to go and secure more sellers and then go back to those agents and help those agents sell our listings to their buyers. It's, 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 these are two of, of literally dozens of strategies that we'll be covering with you in 90 listings in 90 days. Andrew, is there anything else that we should be talking about before we go to the next slide? No, I think those kind of flow together, and it's just a really cool way to market yourself and to do more business in neighborhoods that, you know, you do secure a listing or to be able to break into neighborhoods that, that you don't have listings in yet that you really do want to work. So we're going to be showing this and, and, and some more strategies in order to do that uh, once we get into our courses, which, um, again, the listings one is going to be starting next Monday as well. Awesome. Can we go to the next slide, Nicole? All right, so uh, what we'll be talking about is this course will arm you with the models and systems uh, of, of, and the scripts and the prospecting technique, the accountability, the tracking strategies. Tracking is a massive part of this. Role-playing techniques is we're going to arm you to really take as many listings as you can possibly imagine or more. And again, it's not about 90 listings in 90 days. You can do Lamp Loken and do 100 listings in 30 days. Uh, it can be 20 listings in 90 days. Uh, that's, and, and we'll be talking in, in great detail about this on call one of helping you set up a, a, a stretch goal that's achievable when you're accountable to following the program and the model systems and scripts that, that we'll be laying out for you over the eight-week program. Andrew, what else would you add to that about the program? The program's fantastic. I mean, it's just – it's literally – the raw information of what we used in order to do this challenge ourselves. And I think that's what's so neat about it is that it's, it's what we did, what we struggled with, how we overcame it so that hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes as well, um, and really just setting you up for success, that you can start off call one by setting a goal, getting your team or your allies on board, and just attacking it. And we're, we're giving you the strips to do that. We're showing you how to do it, what we did that worked what to maybe stay away from that doesn't work, um, and just some different ways to do it that will work in your market so that you can achieve these goals that you've set out for yourself. And what better time of year to do it than, you know, smack dab in the middle of July. Yeah, this is an awesome time of year. It's, 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 we've got seasonality in our favor, and historically in most parts of the country, uh, there is more listings that go on the market uh, over the previous month and the next couple months than there is at any other point in the calendar year. So from a, a strategic standpoint, this is a phenomenal time to really set up the third and fourth quarter by taking massive li listing inventory, like literally starting on Monday. And, you know, Gary Keller says in, uh, in, in Career Visioning, 
uh, that no one puts you alone. So we take that very seriously, and our goal as Azure coaches are to help you succeed. If you currently have a team that is fantastic, we're going to coach you and give you ideas and techniques of how your, co your team can be part of this and or support you if you're the rainmaker. If you don't have a team, that is fantastic as well. Uh, we'll be giving you the models and systems for you as an individual agent to grow a massive listing business. So it really is a course for agents of all levels and all productions. We've had literally the top agents in Keller Williams on stage with Gary. Uh, many, many, many of them have been through this program, some of them multiple times. Uh, it is also not uncommon that we have brand new agents who got licensed last two weeks starting out in this program and blowing out a big listing business in the first three, four months of their career. Uh, do you want to share with them how to sign up on this stage and we'll go to Q&A, Andrea, on this slide? Yep, definitely. So um, we're launching Monday, July 10th. That's this Monday, 2 p.m. Central Time, 12 noon Pacific Time. Um, again, it's going to be an eight-week course, one hour each week. All calls are going to be recorded so you can play them back. It's a two nine. $298 investment. You can register um, at scriptcoaching.com and all the information will be there uh, for you to get all registered so you can get started and plugged in on Monday. Yep, there's the link for you, Matt, scriptcoaching.com. Fantastic, fantastic. If you guys have any questions, there's a bar on your screen. Please type them in. Andrew and I are here to answer those for you. Uh, I've got from Nathan as part of the last last program we just wrapped up, and similar for this one, it said you said you met your goal of 90 and 90. How big of a team did it take you to meet your goal? Uh, Nathan, when we started the challenge, we had two buyer's agents. At that point, Andrea was one of – actually, she might have been my showing assistant. Were you a buyer's agent or showing assistant at that time, Andrea? Showing assistant. Showing assistant. So I had two buyer's agents. Well, one buyer's agent, one showing assistant, and I was the lead agent, and I had a couple admins. So for salespeople, there was three of us with me as the only listing agent. And when we ended the challenge, uh, I think we had six or seven buyer's agents slash listing agents on the team. And so we actually grew exponentially. What we found is that by doing the right activities, having the right mindset, Andrew used a great word a few minutes ago called mistakes. We had massive breakdowns, massive breakdowns, massive meltdowns, massive failures, yet we stayed strong and consistent with our mission and our goal, and our maths coaches helped us at every step of the way, and we're able to use those breakdowns as breakthroughs, and we were so consistent at setting and securing listings or buyers, depending on which challenge it was, that we realized immediately we need more help. We're going to need more administrative help to handle all of this business that we just took on. I had one week where I listed 14 houses in one week, and it wasn't a builder. It wasn't an REO account. It was 14 different homeowners that listed with me personally over the course of one week. Like, I needed infrastructure and to start adding people to my company to handle the marketing, support, and customer care. And likewise, when you get 14 listings, what do you get on 14 listings? You, you get about 50, 60 buyers, or the app bats at 50 or 60 buyers. And we quickly realized we need more buyers agents to handle all that business. So we, we literally doubled in size during our first 90 days. And that, that wasn't necessary. It wasn't pre-planned out. It just happened because we were so focused on doing the right activities that, lo and behold, it worked, and we're able to get more listings and get more buyers. And then we had all these new listings and buyers. I was like, well, I, I don't, I can't do it all. So I started uh, attracting great people to the organization to help me service the amount of business that it was that, that we're generating. Okay. Do we have any other questions? I don't know if my computer's froze. Okay. I love it. Nathan. Hey, Nathan, you're back. Or I love it. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so very much for sharing. Greatly appreciate the straightforward answers and strategies. We'll be applying what I've learned today and report back with the results. Awesome, Nathan. And you had some great questions, sir. We'd love to see you as part of one or both of these programs. Uh, $300 investment. Again, Andrea and I are going to pour eight hours nonstop into making sure you've got the systems, models, and mindset to hit and exceed your goals. I think that's a pretty great uh, investment for $298. Andrea, anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? No, we're just we're super excited to get started with this again, bring this class back to you guys, and um, excited for the success that, that we know that you're going to have. Fantastic. Heidi, Marsh, thank you for the great feedback. We care. Uh, we, want, we, we intend to, to help people grow their businesses. We've been blessed by the wonderful MAPS coaches that we have. And we have a, a, a passion to give that back to the other agents with inside of KW. So, folks, we'd love to see you, your friends, your coworkers as part of either program, 90 Listings in 90 Days. It's on the screen now of how to register. It starts on Monday. And we hope that you have a safe and successful end to your holiday week. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Goodbye.
拜拜。